Hello friends, we are back. Uh, today we will be starting with, uh, in continuation with the lecture one for unit one, right? And today's topic we will start with scope and importance of environmental studies. So we will talk first about scope and importance of environmental studies as far as this uh, lecture is concerned, right? So uh, the environment consists of four segments of Earth, namely, as I told you in the last class, atmosphere, which is called as Vayumandal, hydrosphere, which is called as Jalmandal. Then we have lithosphere, which is called as Bhumandal, and biosphere, which is some total of all, which is called as Jalmandal. And these four spheres interact with each other, forming a complex system. So the system which is formed by the interaction of these uh, atmosphere, hydrosphere, lithosphere, and bio. So Basically, it's a complex system. It is not a simple system where our atmosphere is interacting with hydrosphere, is interacting with lithosphere. So everyone, every sphere is interacting with each other. Therefore, uh, if we talk about the scope of environment, iska kitta scope hai environment ka, environmental studies ka. So it's quite wide, right? It deals with many areas. Like if if you talk about broadly, agar main 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 points pe aunga. so conservation of natural resources so jitte bhi aapke natural resources hai, whether you call it as like air water soil then you call it as jitte bhi aapke energy ke resources hai, for example coal petroleum everything then we have biodiversity right everything around you it, it it believes in conserving that natural resource so that the humans can use it then we have ecological aspects ki hame apne ecosystem ka ecology ka right right so everything we have to take care of ecological aspect also like jo bhi plant community around us animal community everything then pollution of the surrounding right pollution of the surrounding natural resources so how much we are like uh, what is the level of pollution in our air water soil right so we have to see that then controlling the pollution then how we can control that pollution us pollution ko kaise control kar sakte what are the ways to control that then social issue connected to it. Ki kaun kaun se samajik issue hai, social issue hai. What are the social issues which can uh, come in between while solving these problems and impacts of human pollution, population and environment and the rapid population which is growing. Jaise our population is a lot And what could be the impact on the environment? Because with increasing the population, you need to have more and more resources of air, water and soil which will be facing the pressure from the population because everyone needs some resources to sustain their life so that's why it is automatically creating a pressure on the environmental resources as all of you know we are having scarcity of water drinking water we have scarcity of uh, living space we have scarcity of pure air we have scarcity of the uh, like all of the substances so this this way uh, it become uh, a thing which puts the pressure on the natural resources right so that's why it is quite important that environmental studies take a quite important role because without the help of connected environmental studies we cannot solve these problems of air water soil pollution and the better future of the human beings now uh, the environmental studies as a subject if important from the following reasons. So why we consider that environmental studies as a subject is important. So because of the following reason it is important. The first reason is that it is a global environmental issue. It is an issue for a world. But every country, every state, every person on this earth have to think about our environment. Issues such as global warming. So if you see that greenhouse gases are increasing, like such as methane, CO2, N2O, chlorofluorocarbon, right? Then we have tropospheric ozone. So these issues are creating global warming. So with that, our climate is changing. More and more threats and more and more adverse conditions we are facing on the earth. And we are feeling difficult to survive here, right? Then we have ozone depletion, the layer which protect us from ultraviolet radiation, especially UVC. So this ozone ozone layer as all of you know we discussed in last lecture we have in stratosphere the protective layer at a distance of 25 to 30 kilometer ozone layer is there which basically absorb mainly uvc and uvb so these are harmful they cause skin cancer and 
many of the skin disease then it also called as leukemias also so it is important and this layer is getting depleted because of the chlorofluorocarbons and other activities so that's why uh, it is a global environmental issue that's why environmental study as a subject is very important we have to study them collectively right right then uh, we have acid rain right so we have acid rain right jisko aap hindi mein amli varsha kehte hain right acid rain mein kya hai whatever acid is there in your atmosphere it will get dissolved basically acid rain mein kya hai all those acids which are formed as a result of uh, oxides of nitrogen and oxides of sulfur they will come onto the earth then we have marine pollution hamare sea aur water bodies pollute ho rahi hai aisi problems ko solve karne ke liye we have this subject as important then biodiversity loss require international efforts so jo bhi hamare in around biodiversity hai jisko aap jaiv vividhta bolte hai right it is getting lost day by day all those animals plant species which are even not known to us we are losing them and we don't know what is the actual importance of some of them the species so before we know them they are getting lost right so biodiversity loss uh, it also requires an international effort because at an individual individual level it is very difficult to solve it we should have a consensus and we should have a uh, like should have a united effort across the globe to solve that that's why this is important and cooperation to solve them we should have a cooperation at international level as well as state and city levels to solve these kind of problems then the second uh, point is uh, why the environmental study as a subject is important because it is necessary for the development and our environment so development had led to urbanization so shahari karan bahut zyada bada hai aapka industrialization industrializations so after the industrial revolution it's like a boom have come in industrialization we are into a era do we are developing country then we have infrastructure telecommunication and transportation systems intensive agriculture kafi high quantity mein we are doing agriculture nowadays because we have huge population to feed that population in order to feed that population we need more and more resources of air water right and food then construction etc is there then development has undesirable effects on the environment on the entire world so whenever you do a development uh, it already put a negative pressure like if you don't take care of the environment it will put a negative pressure on your natural resources as air water and soil and it will lead to the pollution of air water and soil what is happening nowadays so development is coming at a cost of some of the undesirable effects on our environment in the entire world so we uh, this environmental study as subject is important so we have to do such kind of development which can go side by side to the environment like environment should not be damaged and we do some development also then pollution is getting increase increase in pollution day by day that's why environmental studies have become important that if we have to solve the problem of these pollution such as pollution of air jise aap vayu pradushan kehte hain water jal pradushan mrida pradushan so adversely affected human health and in case in it is a cause of concern so when you see the air pollution water pollution and soil pollution basically it give a negative impact on human health right which is a major cause of concern that's why environmental study is important we need to understand the important of pure resources pure air water and soil so we need to understand that these pollutions will be automatically going to impact the human beings which is living on the earth and ultimately they are going to suffer from these then we have a need for an alternative solution like we need a solution the situation we are in we need a solution so it is essential especially for developing countries such as india right to find alternative path to solve the environmental issue so we need some innovation and some alternative steps that how we can solve these environmental issues which we are facing such as air pollution water pollution soil pollution global warming depletion of ozone layer right increasing population pressure on our resources so we have to solve them that's why we need to study environmental studies then we have need for judicious planning of development like you have to right you have to use the resources very judiciously badi samajboot se aapko resource use karne hain our survival and uh sustenance depend on resource availability so if you will not have the resources such as if you don't have sufficient water sufficient 
sufficient food then how people will survive they will die of hunger right so hence proper management of resource hence proper management of resources is needed of the hour that's why the environmental studies is important so that people realize that it is important to reserve the resources for the future also if we have to survive so according to r mishra in 1991 right so r mishra in 1991 recognized four basic requirement of environmental management as under so there are four requirements चार आवश्यकता है अगर आपको अपने वातावरण को मैनेज करना है या अच्छे से व्यवस्थित करना है राइट सो फर्स्ट वन इज द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ ह्यूमन एक्टिविटीज ऑन द एनवायरनमेंट दैट यू हैव टू सी बेसिकली व्हाट एक्चुअली व्हाट ह्यूमन एक्टिविटी लीड्स टू विच काइंड ऑफ प्रेशर और विच काइंड ऑफ हार्मफुल इफेक्ट ऑन अवर एनवायरमेंट राइट सो वी हैव टू मॉनिटर द्यूमन एक्टिविटीज फॉर एग्जाम्पल दैट इफ वी आर मेकिंग इफ वी आर मेकिंग अ बिल्डिंग so how it is going to impact the air water and soil of the nearby area how it is going to impact the biodiversity how it is going to impact the scenic beauty so the impact of human activities on the environment for example if i am uh, increasing the number of vehicle on the road how my air quality is getting impacted if i am extracting too much of ground water how my ground water level is going to be impacted right if i am uh, discharging too much of uh, waste into water that how my rivers are go going to get polluted then we should have a value system that we should have a value of each and every natural resources because they are important though we are taking them free of cost from the nature but we should have a value system right if we have to manage our environment we should have a value system and we should value our natural resources though nature is providing us them free of cost but still we should value them and we should have a clear cut agenda that how they are important and what is the what is the actually need for us then we have should have a plan and design for sustainable development sustainable development is the term which is uh, which you call as satat vikas right so that that uh, the current resources should be used in such a manner that they are preserved for the future also like the, our future generation our children's their grandchildren's can use that right so we should have a proper planning and design right for a sustainable development ye hum kis tarah se development kare lekin development should come not at the cost of environment right then we should have proper environmental education this is very important so might be this is uh, one of the reason that why everyone is emphasizing to have a course on environmental studies nowadays whether it is a school college or undergraduate post graduate level environmental education should be promoted so that people become aware or the young generation become aware or the upcoming generation become aware that what we are getting from nature we should take care of that the all the resources whether it is the pure air water or soil or forest or biodiversity is just a gift of mother nature and we have to take take care of these kind of things so according to the uh, so these are the basic requirement if we have to uh, manage our environment right then uh, now let's talk about the concept of sustainability and sustainable development these are two terms which we have to see that what do you mean by sustainable development and sustainability and what is the importance so let's talk about concept of sustainability and sustainable development so sustainable development so sustainable development as all of you know in hindi we call it as satat vikas satat vikas right so sustainable development is the over uh, overarching paradigm in of the united nations right jo aapka uh, united nations hai right so the concept of sustainable development was described by 19 uh, by the 1987 brutland commission report so there was a report in 1987 by brutland commission right then uh, they described it as the development development that meets the need of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs so if we understand it in simple words it's like <clears throat> when uh, it's like uh, it's like development that meets the need of the present means the present generation they should get the natural resources which is required for example they should get pure air pure water food proper food proper shelter so all the resources right 
so the development should be done in such a manner that the all the resources which the present generation is using right they must be preserved for the future generation also so that the future generation can also use for example our children our grandchildrens right so we should not compromise that uh, all the resources we use right now and there is nothing which is left for the future so development that meets the need of the present like whatever people are there they should get the resources in current time right right where uh, we uh, we get uh, what is here at present whatever resources are there we should be able to use that and we should do some development plus it should be maintained or preserved or conserved in such a manner that it should be available for the our future generation our children our grandchildren to meet their so that they can also use it right it should not be uh, exhausted with our generations so there are four dimension to sustainable development right basically uh, there are four parts right or four dimension of sustainable development hai jisko aap satat vikas kehte hain right so these develop uh, these dimension of the sustainable development are society ek to usme hamara samaj aa gaya second is environment right isme ek hamara vatavaran aa gaya environment then third is culture right jo sanskriti hai hamari wo aa jayegi and fifth one is economy right जो हमारी अर्थव्यवस्था है वो उसमें आएगी राइट सो दीज फोर आर द डायमेंशन विच वी नीड टू टेक केयर फॉर द सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट लाइक वी शुड हैव अ सोसाइटी राइट वी शुड टेक केयर ऑफ द सोसाइटी वी टू शुड टेक केयर ऑफ द एनवायरमेंट वी शुड टेक केयर ऑफ अवर कल्चर वी शुड टेक अवर इकोनॉमी राइट सो ऑल दीज आर द डायमेंशन विच वी नीड टू टेक केयर इन ऑर्डर टू हैव अ सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट सो दिस वॉज अबाउट सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट then uh, these uh, these dimensions ye jo humne charo aspect mention kiye hain the above mentioned dimensions so sustainable development are intervene they are interconnected they cannot be separate right society is connected to environment because our society live in a particular environment then uh, society is also connected to culture culture is also connected to environment and economy is connected to every one of them so all four of them are interconnected they are not separate sustainability is a paradigm of thinking about the future in which environmental social and economic consideration are balanced in pursuit of improved quality of life so when we talk about sustainability so sustainability basically think about the future prospect right where we can have environmental social and economic balance right so that our quality of life improves so we should have a environmental security we should have a social security we should have a economical security and which can uh, the balance right and so that our the quality of life can improve because without uh, the balance between these dimensions we cannot have a improved quality of life for example a prosperous society relies on healthy environment right so this you can see if our environment is not healthy the society cannot be prosperous right to provide food and resources safe drinking water and clean air for the citizens so if you have a healthy environment it should be built up from that we should have a capacity to provide food to everyone we should have safe drinking water we should have clean air for all the citizens so these are the ingredient uh, which makes a healthy environment right so the, the, there you can see that we need every dimension of it right then now let's see uh, what we understand by what is the difference between sustainable development and sustainability right so sustainability is often thought of a long term goal so ye hamara long term ka goal hota hai sustainability because you cannot achieve this in a shorter period of time so a more sustainable world while sustainable development refers to the many process and pathways to achieve it so basically sustainability is a long term goal it's a outcome of sustainable development right and sustainable development as i told you we have to use the resources judiciously so that we can also use them and our grandchildrens 
our children's, the future generation, the resources should remain available or conserved or preserved for them so that they can also use. For example, sustainable agricultural and forestry, if you talk about sustainable production and consumption, we talk about. So if you talk about sustainable agriculture, people are nowadays talking about organic farming, then they are talking about uh, and then they are talking about the farming in such a fashion where we can increase the productivity and uh, it should be like the productivity should not be lost right and then we have forestry so that we have more and more forested areas and more production of the available oxygen which can improve our environment then for example here we have given the example that sustainable production that we should get proper productivity and consumption also that we should consume in such a manner that it should remain for the future generation. Good government, research and technology transfer, education and training, etc. So all of them, whether you talk about good government so that our agencies should be like that, they make sure that our resources are maintained, then we should do proper research over uh, conserving these resources, over solving the problems of air, water, soil pollution, then we should have proper technology transfer for them. Then we should educate people about uh, conserving our resources and provide them the proper training. So this was uh, for uh, this lecture. And next time we will start with a brief history of environmentalism. And most probably that will be our last class for this uh, chapter one. Right. So uh, I hope uh, we have added some of the knowledge for your use so let us know that how we can improve in our upcoming videos so this was for today thank you very much guys keep learning the subject and keep enjoying the subject thank you